It's been over a year since we've checked out a keyboard from Thermaltake, so let's see how far they've come. G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sean and today we're gonna to be taking a look at Thermaltake Argent K5 RGB mechanical gaming keyboard. We're gonna be exploring some of its features, testing out the software and uh, whether or not it is worth the $370 price tag that it's currently going for here in Australia. If you like this kind of content and you found it helpful, hit the like button if you loved it, get subscribed and let's begin. Okay, so before I get into talking about all the technical specifications and features, I just want to say just I guess one little bit at the beginning of this review, which is that it's actually a really difficult product to review. Based on the fact that it's $370 puts it into that, I guess, top end of the you know, price range for a keyboard. And when you're comparing keyboards at that price range with competitors like Asus and Logitech and Corsair and you know some other specialist keyboard manufacturers um, I need to be a little bit more critical so what I'm going to do is split this review into almost two parts the first part being the hardware and the features the mechanical parts that are the things that you're going to be interacting with on your desk and then there's going to be the second part which is the software you know how to integrate with RGB how to do macros and that kind of thing because otherwise it just becomes a little bit too unclear about how I actually feel about this product so all that considering uh, all that being considered let's begin uh, going through the technical specifications and the features so let's break down this keyboard and talk about all the different things that you get included so this is a full-sized gaming mechanical keyboard so you have a number pad on the right hand side all of your media function keys along the top you have a volume scroll wheel You've also got USB pass-through and headphone jack pass-through, so that's really, really nice. But then the main thing is really the, the switches, the actual keys themselves. So you've got genuine Cherry MX switches. The one that I've got is with blue, but you can also get them in a Cherry MX silver, which is a linear switch. Now for the RGB components, you've obviously got RGB all the way through the keyboard and you can customize that with um, you know, buttons on the actual keyboard or with the software. And then you've also got an RGB strip along the bottom side of the keyboard that will give you some like, you know, neon, neon car underglow sort of thing. So that way you get a bit of a, you know, an ambient lighting situation happening on your desk as well. So you've got two different zones there, plenty of light, plenty of eye candy to look at. Now the keyboard comes in at 1.45, kilograms it's about 465 millimeters in length and it's got a really nice aluminium top plate so it keeps everything really sturdy hardly any deck flex in that as well and this is a usb keyboard so it's got two usb plugs coming off the cable that goes into your pc one for the keyboard and one for that usb pass-through plus a three and a half millimeter headphone jack that goes into the back of your pc as well if you want to take advantage of those pass-through ports now, two other really cool things that I do love about this keyboard is that they've included a magnetic leather wrist rest, so that's really, really nice. And the actual volume wheel, I wouldn't normally make a comment about it, but the volume wheel is actually, it feels like almost like a car style rotary knob that you would have on like a front of a CD player. It's got a little button on the side so you can mute or unmute, and that actually feels really, really solid. And the overall design of it is really aesthetically pleasing. You've got this sort of titanium look on the left hand side, and then it splits when you get into the number pad area, and that goes into like a black color. So it's almost like a two tone, very, very nice looking uh, keyboard from them. We'll take the actual design is um, something that I do actually genuinely really, really love. Now, for the actual typing experience on this keyboard, personally, I'm someone who prefers linear switches or red switches from Cherry. Using a blue switch is something that I have not done just because the clickiness is too much for me. But being said, that being said, the typing experience for me anyway, I felt like I was missing less keys and not, I guess, incorrectly typing words um, compared to those linear switches where I don't necessarily need to push as hard on those keys because it is a blue clicky switch i felt like i did need to push down a little bit harder and after a while especially when i was typing this review up my fingers did start to feel a bit of fatigue um, so that could just be me and my my wimpy fingers but the actual keycaps themselves hardly had any wobble and it was a really really satisfying um, keyboard to to be typing on and gaming on you know playing things like call of duty um, which is what I'm playing pretty much all the time at the moment. WASD felt really, really solid and I really felt like I was never accidentally hitting a key or a character to do a certain action. It was all very, very intentional and my fingers weren't, 
you know, hitting other other keys by accident um, because of how stable and how solid the blue switch from Cherry feels. So from a typing experience and gaming experience, very, very good. Um, it's got, you know, N key or N key rollover, I think that's what it's called, and it's a thousand megahertz polling rate. So everything was super, super responsive and I never felt like, you know, if I had lost in a game or if I had stuffed up in something that I was typing, it was the keyboard's fault, it was usually mine. Um, so from that aspect, the actual keyboard and using it day in, day out was really, really nice, except my, my fingers did feel like a little bit of fatigue. So if you are coming from something that is linear or maybe a membrane keyboard, um, just take that into consideration that it might take a bit of time for your fingers to sort of to, to adjust to what this feels like. Now, some other things that need to be mentioned is obviously the RGB and some of the things that you can do on the keyboard in terms of recording macros. So yes, you can do macros. You can have your own custom assignments to certain keys to do different things. So it's very, very versatile and can be customized, which is what you would expect for a keyboard at this price range. And then the RGB profiles and effects are very, very nice. You've got you know your RGB waves, your ripples, your pulses, waves, all those different effects that you're probably used to. Um, and the RGB glow, you've got five different levels of brightness and using the keyboard, I guess, built-in functions, you can actually increase and decrease the speeds, change the direction, do a whole bunch of things, and then assign certain RGB effects to different profiles. So you can just go ahead and cycle through, okay, I want static lighting, in this scenario and I want, you know, FPS mode in this um, particular scenario. So, you know, again, at a price point of about $370, you would expect to have these features and they have done a really good job of implementing them. Um, no issues there, to, you know, resumed from when the computer was powered off, it remembered everything, it's got built-in memory, obviously. So that's gonna be really nice if you're unplugging and taking it somewhere, you're not gonna have to worry about any of those profiles being lost. Now, it can't all be sunshine and rainbows. There are some bad things about this product as well. The main thing for me that really, I guess, tarnished the experience was the software. It does feel like that there was two departments building this particular product and they weren't talking to each other and weren't really giving it to users to test before actually going ahead and you know, making it a product that people can actually purchase. So one thing that I hated, I don't like to say hate too much, but when you plug this keyboard in, you can go ahead and control all those different effects, do macros, recall the, all those things very, very easily without software. In the manual, it's actually only 10 steps to cover how to use the keyboard without software. To use it with software, it's another 90 pages of instructions. So I think from that alone, you can kind of tell that the I guess uh, on memory or the memory built into the keyboard and using the keys on the keyboard to control RGB and macros and profiles is way easier than using the software. The software is basic and it's simple and it's got a pretty basic and clean looking UI, but it's not, I don't think, an intentional thing. Looking at the keyboard that I reviewed last year, it's almost the exact same software. You don't get anything new. It's very unintuitive. And if you run the software, you can't even use the brightness keys on the keyboard, like something so simple. If I've got the software installed, that's because I'm trying to sync it with things like my mouse pad or maybe other RGB products from them will take like their water coolers or their fans. But if I've got my software launched for the keyboard, that should still mean things like the most basic things like the adjustability of the brightness should still be a function or a key that I can press and it's just not. How you can have software that thing can disable buttons on the keyboard and then you quit the software and then those buttons come back again is just mind baffling. Why can't you have them both? And that way, for example, when you're in a game, you know, you might be playing something and you might be like, you know what, I want to turn the brightness down a little bit. You've got to alt tab or quit the game, open the software, turn it down, go back into the game. It's like four, five, six steps for just something that literally there is a button for that you can press. So why have some buttons disabled and why have other ones not, I don't really understand. Another one, for example, is if you press function and then I think it's numlock, it locks the whole keyboard. So that way like, you know, you might be cleaning it. That feature is only enabled when the software is not running in the background. As soon as you open the software, it basically like is not an option anymore. So there's lots of little things like that for the software side of things. 
um, the integration with the memory on the keyboard that just are clashing a lot of the time. And it's really, really frustrating because when you compare to companies like Asus, Corsair, Logitech, their software is so polished, it's so nice to use, it integrates with all these third-party programs. And you know, when you're spending this much money, you expect that you know, this is gonna be a really nice experience. You can give it to someone, they're not gonna have any issues. So from a software point of view, then we'll take really needs to step up their game. They really need to look at it and start again, in my opinion, um, because I can only assume that this would carry over to some of their other products as well. Now, I hope Thermal Take doesn't take what I've just said like I'm hating on Thermal Take. Thermal Take's one of my most loved brands. I've been a big supporter of their products and been paying for their products for a long, long, long time. But as a tech reviewer and talking to you guys, I have to be honest about my experience with this keyboard and comparing it to other ones that I've used. Their software is just not good and I really hope Thermal Take takes this advice, asks questions internally and externally, and tries to fix it for their next products. Because otherwise, I just don't see how you can keep charging 300 and something dollars for a keyboard um, and not expect to get a lot of returns because, because of things like software. So, if I was to review this keyboard for the hardware alone, I'd be saying the keyboard alone, nine out of, nine out of 10, like great product, great engineering, they've delivered something really solid. And I would probably be using it without the software at all. Now, if you put the software layer on top of it and you wanna integrate it with other things like other products from Thermaltake or third-party applications like Amazon or Google, yes, you can technically do it, but you lose a lot of functionality. So for that part, I would have to say six out of 10 um, for this keyboard. So it's a little bit unfortunate. So let's jump into a keyboard typing test so you can actually hear how it sounds. So you get a bit of an idea of what it's gonna be like when you get this thing at home. Now I know I just said a lot of negative things about the software, but I want to emphasize that this is still a really, really solid product and I'm actually going to really miss using this keyboard. So that being said, I'm not going to be daily driving this keyboard at my desk. I'm going to go back to what I was using before and that's only just because of the software and the integration. So if you're going to buy this keyboard, buy it just for the hardware and forget the software until Thermal will take announces a fix or a revision to the current version that's out there. Now, have they actually come a long way since their last keyboard that I reviewed over a year ago? 100%. This keyboard, way more premium feeling, way better quality materials and components, better switches, just an overall better product aesthetically and physically like interacting with it. The software though, really doesn't feel like a considered piece of the puzzle here. It is the thing that is dragging it back and not propelling it forward and it really hinders your overall experience with this particular keyboard. So guys, if you're gonna buy this keyboard, get it for just the keyboard alone. That's my opinion. Forget about the software, um, but let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. I'm also over on Twitch every Friday night. You can catch up with me there if you want to. I'll leave links to that as well down below. Hit the like button if you like this video, get subscribed and I'll see you in the next video. Now that you are at the end of this video and maybe you are shopping around for keyboards, check out one of my other videos that I've done recently on the G915 from Logitech. Leave a little card up in the corner and you can head over and check that one out now, 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 now. Mm-mm.